Thank you. Gorgeous. Absolutely Thank you. gorgeous. Thank you. Um, and that piece is in standard tuning? A drop D. Or it's in drop D. Mm -hmm. um, wow. So it let's, I, I know you're kind of new to our guitar family. So yes. um, how, um, gosh, I know you've been in Nashville forever. Um, Thir 33 years now. 33 years mm -hmm. here. Where did you grow up? Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, Santa California. Barbara, California. Mm -hmm. And then did you come from a musical family? Not really, no. no. Um, um, I had a couple of cousins that were piano players, but that was about as close enough. Nobody in my immediate family. Mm -hmm. that, uh, but, um, you know, I, I kind of grew up and came, came of age in the, in the 60s in Southern mm -hmm. California. So the first music I was attracted to was surf music and, you yeah. know, and the Beach yeah, yeah. Boys and the Ventures and that yeah. kind of stuff. And right about the time I, I got a guitar, around 12 years old, mm -hmm. um, uh, the Beatles played on Ed Sullivan. And that's right. And that was the end Changed of it for many of us. Yes, exactly. Now, um, um, so then you were, did you have formal instruction? On yes, I, I, actually, I actually had three great teachers growing mm -hmm. up. First one was in junior high. His name was Russ Johnson. And he would teach me the latest Beatle tune so that I could take my guitar to school. And the girls that would normally ignore me, I'd take out the guitar <laughs> and they'd all gather around. And that's, and that's how it works. And that's, the, that's, all, the, that's all the motivation uh, a guy needs. And, you know, I remember uh, about Russ, um, when he played, he just had a smile from ear to ear. He just beamed joy. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I remember thinking, I want that. Yeah. And thinking, maybe if I unlock the secrets of the guitar, yeah. that joy, it, it really made a, an impact on me. Now, did you um, did you go to college for for guitar? No, I got a, I went to college and got a degree in marine biology. <laughs> in marine biology, I didn't know what I was what I wanted to do. <laughs> but I, I I had a high school a, a teacher in high school who was kind of the local rock guitar hero, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and then I, I went to college, and then uh, my third teacher was a, a guy named Bill Thrasher, mm -hmm. who. I don't know if you, familiar. yeah, but, well, he, you remember the Joe Pass guitar method, the orange book with I the line I, I drawn? I think I have that, yeah. B B Bill wrote that book. <laughs> Maybe that's where, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. he was in Santa Barbara, and he was, uh, I mean, he played with George Shearing, and he knew, yeah. and he was friends with Joe, and, uh, but that's, that's Bill's baby, that wow. book, so I studied with him, and, and Bill became my, my mentor, my, like a second father, mm -hmm. um, I was, his last lesson of the day is we'd go around the corner to a diner, and uh, just talk for hours and hours. Yeah. Ma mainly him talking, me listening. You know. <laughs> as, as jazz players tend to be, he was a bit of a philosopher. So yeah. if he had an opinion, it soon became my opinion. Yeah. I just absolutely... Uh, it's, it's fair to say I would not be a professional musician had I not met Bill. Yeah. 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 Now, how did you... Right, how did you make that leap from, from, from just uh, learning and doing to actually playing with others? Well, after graduating from college, I thought, you know, I, I think I want to try to make it in music. Mm -hmm. I had no clue how to do it, but I, I guess I had announced to Bill that I, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a professional musician. And one day as we were walking back from the diner, and, and Bill was always so encouraging of me. Yeah. But one day he turned, he turned to me and he said, what are you doing? And um, I said, what do you mean? His tone, his tone of voice was much harder now. And he said, if, you're, if you want to be a professional musician, you, you have no, you're not going about it anywhere close to the right way. Mm -hmm. And he told me every pro professional musician he knew took at least a year, got rid of all distractions, mm -hmm. and pretty much locked themselves away with their instrument. Yeah. And yeah. He, he likened it to iron going through, uh, for, you know, forging into steel by going through a fire. Yeah. And he said, when you come out and, and just uh, practice all, all day long, every day, and he says, when you come out the other side, you will own your music. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so um, I just thought, well, you know, he, he thinks I have it. Yeah, I've got what it takes. I just need to work harder. So that's exactly what I did. Yeah. I, I, at the time I was teaching at a music store, mm -hmm. I got rid of all my students except about 10, mm -hmm. and I put them on Saturday. I had another part-time job as a del delivery man. I quit that. I even quit lessons with Bill. By then I had so much material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and I just locked myself away for a year. Mm -hmm. and practiced all day. Yeah. And at the end of that year, I got a five-night-a-week club gig. And that was equally important mm -hmm. because there's a lot of things you can practice in your room that sound good you know, in your bedroom that don't, don't you know, on the bandstand. Yeah. And yeah, so I got, a exactly. I got a chance to try out all this stuff. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like 
you know, making a huge clam on stage in front of your bandmates and an audience yeah. to sear it in your brain. <laughs> I'll never do that there again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. And then, um, boy, that is so true. I remember, I remember cutting my teeth in kind of jazz jam sessions on Sunday nights. And uh, uh, you'd play for a little bit. I'd work up my tune. I'd play in a jam session. Then I'd come home thinking, man, I am absolutely terrible. Yeah. And then you go practice for another week or two, come back with a few more tunes, and carve it out. That stage experience is a crucial part of it. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, so did you, did making the jump past that into playing with professional people, I know you've played with uh, Reba McIntyre. Was she mm -hmm. your first kind of well, I, large um, artist that you played I, with? Well, um, I got hired by a band up, uh, th it was up in Redding, California, which is extreme northern California, yeah. just 100 miles from the Oregon border. And um, so I, I moved up there, and they had the house band at a resort on Lake Shasta that was owned by Merle Haggard. Oh, okay. So okay. I met Merle. Mm -hmm. And um, he had a houseboat docked on, on that resort on, on the lake. And that was the scene of a lot of all-night jam sessions, including members of The Strangers. Mm -hmm. And at the, at the time, Freddie Powers, a, a Texas singer-songwriter, was up mm -hmm. there. And he was kind of, uh, and Freddie had his band. So the jam session was guys like Tiny Moore and Jimmy Belkins and Norm Hamlet from The Strangers. And Freddie and his bass player, Dean Reynolds, um, and, and, and me. And so mm -hmm. a band was kind of formed from, from, and we just played Western swing stuff and yeah. just whatever. And... Um, Merle was pushing Freddie at that time to be an, an, an artist in his own right. Mm -hmm. So we, they put a band together. It was me and Merle on guitar and all these other guys. And Freddie out front singing all these, you know, um, uh, old swing tunes. Mm -hmm. And we did, a, we did a, a tour up and down California. Mm. And, uh, and then a little later on that year, I put a band together for Merle's daughter. And we went out and opened shows for his tour. Oh, wow. And so... That was that way, and Merle was very generous about imparting it. He, he, you know, he, he was a music scholar. He knew yeah. so much about music, and he was very generous about passing that knowledge on to me. That yeah. was that was my kind of my graduate school of just <laughs> hanging out with him. And, uh, but uh, you know, I had a I had a family. I had a wife and four kids. Yeah. And living in Reading, you know, if you didn't work for Merle, you couldn't make a living as, yeah. as, as a musician. So I decided to move to Nashville. So I did that yep. in eighty five. Nineteen eighty five. Yeah. Yep. And, and then how did you get? Locked into the Nashville scene because you're you're, you know I was reading the the quote about uh, from Guitar Player magazine that uh, one of the most well respected Nashville sidemen. Oh, wow. wow. um, that nice. That's high praise from Guitar Magazine. Yeah, yeah, Guitar it, Player magazine. It, yeah, it was. Um, I, I I I moved back, back here, left my family in California just to move back and see what I could get going. Mm -hmm. And um, I knew one person, Jimmy Olander. Oh, well, that's a good person to know. It <laughs> I had just met him. He had been out in, in California at the time. He was working with Mel McDaniels. Yeah. And I met him, and I says, I'm thinking about moving back, back to Nashville. I, I want to come back and check it out. And, you know, he's the nicest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. He said, well, come stay with me. Mm -hmm. I took him up on it mm -hmm. and slept on his couch while I kind of went and sat, uh, sat in all around town. Yeah. And um, finally got, um, uh, I finally got a six-night-a-week gig down in Printer's Alley. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And they, and they said... Uh, well, you start in two weeks. I said, great, I'm going to go back and move my family back mm -hmm. to Nashville. So, loaded up the U-Haul, you know, packed uh, my wife Nancy in the van. We've yeah. got four kids. I've got a dog. It takes us forever to get across the country. It's August. We arrive in Nashville Monday afternoon. I'm going to start that night, that yeah. Monday night. And so, uh, I go down to the club, and I was so tired, I fell asleep on stage playing guitar. <laughs> and that was the beginning of your Nashville career. I got fired that night. <laughs> 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 but i have been, um, uh, uh, been playing at this jam session that was attracting a lot of great musicians. It was a little club called Tracks out in Franklin. And um, when, um, when Reba was looking for a guitar player, her band leader called uh, about five people that he knew here in town. Yeah. And he later told me, he says, my name was the only name on all five lists. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's because, not that I was the greatest guitar player those, those guys knew, but I'd been out sitting in everywhere, yeah. every night. I treated it like a job. Yeah. Sat in every night and then went back. Mm -hmm. Got to keep those contacts fresh. So I think I was just on, on the top of everybody's mind. Yeah. And yeah. so um, they hired me. That's, 
an amazing connection that you need to ha be as a musician. It's not just the being able to play well. Get out there. Be able to connect with others and keep fresh and let them know who you are and, and, and what you do and uh, that you're looking for a gig. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I, um, you know, it was it was so funny. But by then, I, I, we were broke. Mm -hmm. you know, the kids, the, uh, we were on government cheese. We the rent was due again. I didn't have it. I was yeah. thinking about selling guitars. Yeah. When the call came. Yeah. And Reba says, "Well, meet us, meet us." And they had a travel day. By then, they had already left town and were still traveling. Says, "We have a travel day off. Meet us. We're going to fly you to Cincinnati." We had one rehearsal, short rehearsal in a meeting room at the Holiday Inn, and the next night we're playing at the Pittsburgh Coliseum for twenty thousand people. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Wow, I see so many of you are already starting to ask questions. Um, um, wow, and there's so much more of your career I want to, I want to get into, but uh, let's catch a couple of couple, couple of questions. Um, Aussie Muso is saying, what gear are you using tonight? I'm afraid that's a, a pretty simple question. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this, the guitar I'm holding is uh, built by James Olson. These, these guitars are just uh, incredible. This, this happens to be owned by Kathy Matea. I happen to be borrowing it for a session this week, so I thought, I mean, it's, this guitar is just so amazing. That, oh, it's, that, got some, it gets a beautiful sound, warm, yeah, full tone. Yeah, you know, Phil Kagey plays yeah, Olsons, Phil's, Phil's James Taylor, yeah. McCar McCar Paul McCartney's got a, a, an Olson. Um, so, uh, it's it, it, they're really special guitars. and uh, They get they get a, a, a beautiful, beautiful tone. Yeah. Now, does that one have a pickup in it? Uh, no, not really. I mean, it, it, there is there is a bridge pickup in it, but it, uh, uh, it's not. This 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 really isn't a, a a stage guitar. This is a studio guitar. Now, when you because uh, you've been with Kathy Matea for twenty eight seven twenty eight years 28 now. Twenty eight years. Yes. When you're out on stage with her, do you use any sort of um, um, gear for th that type of setup? This this is my main stage guitar. It's a uh, my trusty old guild, and uh, I've had it for thirty years, and I and I, I wanted to bring it tonight because uh, George Groon himself designed this model. It's a GF50, <laughs> um, kind of a jumbo shape, a little smaller. But uh, yeah, but I like that it's a little thinner around yeah, the top. Yeah, That's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, and so this is this is my main stage guitar, and it's got. Um, uh, it's got the finish. It's been all over the world. It's got the finished cracks to prove it, mm -hmm. uh, but that only you know makes it more resonant as mm -hmm. it dries out. And I, I've got a, a, an LR Bags Duet system. Okay. This is a system he made in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is a prototype. I beta tested these systems for him when he was first developing them, yeah. and this is the first one, and it's still still going strong all these years later. And then, uh, do you run it through anything when you're? Uh, Send it to the board. Are you going through the the LR bags uh, lyric no. or their or their little their pedal for Any, that? No, or? nothing. Yeah. It, well, the preamp is is on board. There's a mm -hmm. the preamp right in here. Mm -hmm. it, it's a combination of a LB6 bridge pickup and a microphone inside. And and the preamp is is here. You can blend the two signals, the mic mm -hmm. and, the, and the pickup volume, and, and even a little graphic EQ. And this this is an amazing. I've heard some recordings that have just. Gorgeous. Yeah, th th this is a great system. I, I love it. He made the one he makes now called the Anthem is mm -hmm. also a, yeah. a bridge pickup and a mic. It's a, it, there. Are di it's a different circuitry, but it's kind of the same uh, idea. Yeah. Get you get the strong fundamental of a pickup, and you get the air and and the, just the sound of the individual guitar with the mic. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, let's see. Skip Russell is asking a little bit different kind of a question. How important is it to be able to sight read? Uh, to be a studio musician? Well, uh, by sight read, uh, you, you mean notation. Um, uh, in this town, not, uh, and, and you, yeah. you don't have to. You don't have to. I, I used to uh, be a better reader when I was in California. I did more of it. Uh, but I, I do almost none here. Yeah. It's, it's number charts, rhythm charts, chord charts, if mm -hmm. you will, um, redu reduced to numbers. Um, and head arrangements is, mm -hmm. is, is how... Um, now, for those of uh, for those that might be watching, describe what a head arrangement. Well, a head arrangement is, is um, you, you'll be in the studio. Uh, the uh, artist may sit down and just play the mm -hmm. song uh, on his or her guitar, or there might be a demo played, mm -hmm. and a chart is either written on the spot or there's one supplied, and it's the chord progression 
uh, reduced to numbers mm -hmm. so that uh, you can you can uh, modulate if, if need be on yeah. the spot. If, if the singer decides at the last minute, let's do it in A flat instead of A, yeah. you're not scrambling to, to rewrite the chart. That's right. So it's based on scale degrees. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, and so you have that, which is just kind of a road map mm -hmm. of there's the changes. Uh, and then you get in uh, into the, the tracking room and you just start playing through it and somebody might have an idea for a, a, a groove or a different mm -hmm. groove than maybe was uh, presented. Um, so somebody might start playing an intro. Hey, so-and-so over there on the piano has got, got the intro. Yeah, That's yeah. cool. And everybody just piles on and comes up with ideas and, and comes up with a part. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so in, you know, creativity is at a, at creativity a pretty premium. Yeah. Um, I know since I've been here in Nashville, I don't think I've ever been in a recording session where um, they've handed me notes on a page. Yeah. Um, but having said that, your ability to be able to read a number chart is key. So um, that's a very good skill in this town to know the Nashville number system and to be able to, when they hand you something, it may be easy with ones, fours, and fives, or I've seen other ones that it looks like a science experiment. And uh, with all with numbers and slashes and double codas and half verses and key changes, it it's, can get complex very quickly. Um, so your ability to read that kind of stuff is, um, is important, especially in Nashville. Um, wonderful. Tom Moore is asking, um, what did you practice on uh, to improve your ear? Uh, I, I saw I saw there was a Y on, on the front of that last word a minute ago. Oh, year. The, oh, right. He's thinking about my year uh, as a hermit, I think. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> maybe that's what it is. Uh, what did you practice on the year that you um, locked myself away? You locked yourself away. That's a good question. Uh, I, well, I, I, I split it up because there's so. We much. should ask your wife what she practiced the whole time. No, she was. Uh, this was pre. This was oh, pre Nancy. Okay. This is pre Nancy. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a single man's uh, project. <laughs> this, this lock yourself away for a year. Yeah. Um, um, I, you know, I, there's so much to to, to practice that I, I that I, I segmented the, it up to, uh, and, and I also um, put it into 45 minute uh, practice sessions, yeah. and, and took, then took a 15 minute break, yeah. and then came back, um, and those 15 minute breaks were really important because yeah. you you can. You can start spinning your wheels and not yeah. really accomplishing yeah. much if you just uh, if you don't get up and take a break. And, I, and to this day, I'm amazed how how refreshing a 15 minute break is. You come back. I may have been practicing all morning, but it feels like I'm picking it up for the first time yeah. after 15 minutes. So, uh, and I would also use that uh, t those time frames to you know one 45 minute segment might be practicing scales, mm -hmm. then chord studies and maybe I would transcribe a solo from mm -hmm. you know just you know learns a solo off a, a record mm -hmm. um, primarily acoustic or acoustic and electric uh, oh electric very much very much like all, all those club years uh, it was like a decade of playing clubs that was all electric I no. came to town kind of a, I mean the, the Reba gig was an electric guitar gig mm -hmm. um, even the Kathy gig when I first got it was an electric guitar gig it, mm -hmm. it's it's evolved into an acoustic gig and and now I'm I'm more much more known as an acoustic player. But yeah, yeah. I think every video I've seen yeah. of you. Yeah, no, I was um, very was much acoustic. Yeah, very much lately. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you know how it is. Yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever you need to do. Right. Exactly. Whatever you need to do. All right. Well, we'll let you take a quick break. Um, wow, I think I'm more fascinated in the process <laughs> of doing this. Um, yeah, 45. I know I can take about 45 minutes of. of of intense concentration, and then uh, I gotta get out of there. I gotta go bounce the basketball, or, or in my weaker moments, go to the fridge. But uh, <laughs> um, you just gotta give your mind a break. And I don't know. Sometimes, if I'm wrestling with something, I just can't get my get the breakthrough on. I just can't get my fingers around whatever the problem is. Well, it's amazing how much will get solved just mentally if you just go do something else for a while, and then you come back to it, and then say, oh, well, there. Are that's the answer to that little problem. Right. And exactly. it's like your, your, your brain needs that time. Exactly. So this, this stuff has to kind of sift down into your subconscious, yeah. you know, and, and uh, um, th that, that's where a lot of the learning takes place. Yeah. You know, yeah. when, you, when you're away from the guitar, just, you, you're, I mean, I, I tell my students, um, 
your job is to um, in, input the, the accurate, correct information mm -hmm. uh, into your subconscious, into your nervous system, mm -hmm. and it will work on it when you're sleeping, when you're eating, yeah. when you're driving in your car, and it will filter back up. It will it will bubble back up to the surface, but it, you'll you'll get what you put into it. So yeah. Yeah. practice slow. Accuracy is at a premium. Yeah. If you're if you're stumbling a lot, you're uh, that should be a huge red flag mm -hmm. to, to slow down because 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 that then because you, you're the you're the computer programmer if you will mm -hmm. uh, to your subconscious so you have to put in the right ones and zeros. <laughs> That's right. And if you don't, I heard it. I heard the analogy put one time. It's like a, a skier skiing down a slope for the first time. You got to be very careful that first time that you go down the slope you have to make exactly the right movements or you'll get the groove and it may be a little bit off in some areas and next thing you know that's that's a little tougher you've got to try and train your brain to go a different direction so that first few times when you're going through something in your own learning be very careful to try and get it right don't allow yourself to be sloppy and uh, train your brain to go the correct way down the hill and it'll be a lot. You'll get you'll get to the end a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. You won't have to kind of retrain yourself. Right. Um, and relax too. If sometimes if you get too uptight about uh, learning, your brain just doesn't doesn't work as well. Right. Right. Uh, doesn't work as well. And I know you do a lot of uh, teaching. In fact, some of our students are some of your students. That's what I'm, uh, I understand, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, Pat L uh, Livgren, Livgren was, yep. uh, was in a class I taught at Swananoa last month. Yeah. And I know she put in a, a, a word. Uh, That's right. She's and, kind of the, the one that connected us and, both and, here. And another, another student, Paulette Fisk. Uh, Paulette Fisk. She was also at Swananoa. Well, she's been a, um, a Skype student of mine for three years. Wow. And I've got some of my students. I, I teach a couple of days a week at, at Shiloh Music in Mount Juliet. Oh, okay. And some yeah. of my students are here tonight. <laughs> cheering me on so I, I love teaching I, as I know you do too it's Fan, um, so rewarding it is it is uh, passing what you know on uh, I, I, I love and it. you learn so much through teaching too how to organize the information yeah. has, has been the key to me yeah um, is uh, a lot of times you, uh, you'll, you'll have you'll come across a great player but they just cannot um, explain it they just can't put it in the right order. They're brilliant, right. undoubtedly brilliant, right. but they just can't organize it that way. Right. Right. Um, it's an important skill. Yeah. All right, we'll let you catch your breath for a second, okay. and then we'll let you play a little something more for us. Okay. Uh, let's give something away. Let's uh, give away. Um, this is uh, Bill's most recent CD. Tell us a little bit about this. Uh, this is um, uh, a solo record, uh, which uh, all my uh, three previous CDs were all, you know, we had rhythm sections and string mm -hmm. sections and horn sections. But I thought, I, I, always in the back of my mind, it's like, well, could I pull off a solo record? And so I thought, well, I better get to it, if it you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, this is a, a solo record, and uh, I, think, I think I had the most fun. This was the most enjoyable process of recording an album. And it, 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 meant, it meant writing the tunes. Uh, I mean, I had to make that decision before I wrote the tunes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I had to know going in that it was going to be um, a solo record. Because, you know, w w in previous times, I was like, oh, well, the second verse, I'll have the, the rhythm section. Somebody or I'll have yeah, somebody yeah. come in and I can just keep going. No, this time i got to come up with something different to keep their interest up. i got to come up with something different in the second verse. That's right. And so that's, um, that, that was the story there. There's two exceptions. There's one cut. Uh, the last cut on the record, um, Kathy Mateo sing, we sing, uh, she sings a, an old Jesse Winchester tune, yeah. and um, and there's one uh, cut on there that's a duet with my son, who, yeah, uh, yeah. and um, he's uh, he's in town making his mark in the music scene. He's going out on the road and and um, he's in a couple of different bands and he's yeah. an amazing guitar player. His name's Aaron Cooley, yeah, and right. uh, it was it was great fun. Uh, we we just kind of at the last minute threw this song together and went in the studio. It might be my favorite cut because the the potential for disaster was so high. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we came out with something. Yeah. <laughs> um, wonderful. Okay, someone is about to win this. The winner of this is Ron T. Ron T. You have just won Bill's uh, uh, latest CD. 
you would be so gracious enough to autograph this of before course. we go. Um, if they, folks want to learn more about you, they can go to your website, which is BillCooley.com? BillCooleyMusic.com. BillCooleyMusic.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see where Bill is playing and get in contact with him if yep. you're interested in uh, lessons or in some of the great uh, re educational resources that he has. So congratulations, that, Ron. By, by the way, that's my wife's uh, line drawing on the, on the cover. Very cool. She's the talented one in the family. She's a great <laughs> artist. So. Wonderful. Um, Wonderful. Well, congratulations, Ron. Glad you were able to do it. Uh, glad you were able to win that. Um, let me give a couple of announcements before we have Bill play another song. We've got our Fall Finger Style Retreat um, coming up October 30th through November 2nd. Maybe we could... I'm going to talk to Bill yeah. maybe after uh, the show and see if you're available. Twist my arm. October Twist my arm, 30th, see. perhaps. Um, we, so October 30th, it starts. October um, uh, 31st, we're having uh, Trevor Gordon Hall uh, is going to be with us. And then the next night is Phil Kagey. So um, if you're interested, it's sold out. But um, if you can, if you are interested, uh, send me an email and I'll put you on the waiting list. We only have about one or two on the waiting list right now. And usually a couple of people drop because something comes up the last minute. So there is a chance that you might be able to get in. So... That's our Fall Fingerstyle Guitar Retreat. We do have a summer conference, um, which that's at Guitar Gathering 2019. Um, it was fantastic, the one we had back in June uh, this year, and so we got the page up a little bit earlier this time. So for next year, and we already have, I don't know, 15, 18 people registered for our conference next year, you can go to guitargathering2019.com and reserve your space. Uh, already for our conference. It should be a great time. Um, also wanted to let you know, I'm currently finishing up um, the fretboard workout project that we did. Um, it's been months ago that we recorded it on the money chords. That was a series I did with Gibson for their uh, skills house, Gibson skills house lessons, and one of the most popular things we did over there. Um, and so we put it all into one um, fretboard workout, and I added a bunch of material to it as well. If I can get all of my ducks in a row, that should be released on Friday. So I will send you all an email on that. And uh, it was just the chords that, when I'm in the studio, that actually uh, the shapes that you use to get the guitar sounds that you're going for. So um, that fretboard workout uh, is coming this weekend. So I'll send you all an email on the money chords. Um, I think that's all of my um, fun stuff I need to um, announce. Um, can you play something else for us? Sure. What are, what are you What are you playing? Um, well, I'm, I've got this in an open C tuning, which uh, T tell us what uh, what the well without with, are with, with, without the uh, capo on it would be C G C G C E. C G C G. Root C, five, e. root five, root three. And it's, so, what does yeah. that sound? Just open. So just regular old C chord. It's a big old yes, and. Um, uh, I, I'm keeping it on the second fret, so we're in D. But it's a it's a very versatile tuning, mm -hmm. and um, uh, Kathy and I both play that tuning. She learned this tuning from a uh, a wonderful uh, Scottish singer songwriter named Doogie McLean, mm -hmm. and uh, he plays it in open C. I learned it back in the '70s, I think, probably from a Leo Kotke record or mm -hmm. something. Um, but mm -hmm. um, uh, so so we 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 play uh, in this tuning on some songs during the show. So I thought I would demonstrate a little bit um, maybe play a, a couple of short pieces Please. Uh, you can play very pretty stuff or, or like this
beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. And um, you can also play kind of funky bluesy stuff on there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, gorgeous. Um, as you all have questions, please type them in there. If you can do them in all caps, that all help. That helps us to, to figure them out there. Uh, Lee Candioti is, is saying, uh, sounds like you keep short fingernails on your right hand. Yes, yes. Um, uh, I do have acrylic nails on my uh, middle and ring finger. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't seem to need it much on the index finger. Now, are they angled? Uh, in, in how you are, it uh, uh, looks like they're angled a little bit in how you're uh, this, shaping them. This yeah. Uh, I, um, yeah, I guess so. Over, over the years, I, I mean, I, I guess I don't notice it so much, but... If you could maybe maybe even just hold them up so that uh, we got them for... Oh, over for this, here, yeah. Yeah, the other, and then yes, hold... of course. And then turn your hand around if you can. There you go. I, I, I try, I keep them, if I'm looking at them, they're just over the top of my fingertips yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and no longer. Yeah. It, any longer than that, and I, I, you start hearing too much nail. It gets too clicky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, it's mainly, um, I'm, I'm mainly playing with the, the flesh uh, mm -hmm. uh, of my fingertips, and at the, at the last minute when you release it, the nail catches it just for a little definition yeah. on, the, on the note. Yeah. But um, I, I've, I've tried, the, tried them really long, and it just gets too, you start hearing the nails too yeah. much. So. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a little cumbersome if yeah. they get too long. And yet I've seen some folks oh, I know. play. I, I, I don't know how they do it. I know it. There's some wonderful guitar players out there with their nails out like that. So, I saw we had Christy Linnae. Are you familiar with Christy Linnae? No. Uh, she was the uh, 2017 International Fingerstyle champ, Winfield champion oh, oh. Um, in 2017. And uh, she was on the show uh, a month or so ago. In fact, I just put that video up if you want to go to our, our YouTube uh, Guitar Gathering YouTube page. And... Uh, Gosh, her nails were like a quarter of an inch or more. And she's doing all this tapping stuff. I'm like, how on earth does she do that? And she just worked it out. That's she had beautiful wild. nails. But, That's and wild. yet she's doing all the tapping stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, Tom is asking, what strings are you using? John Pierce. Wonderful strings. Yes, wonderful. I've been uh, using them for years. And, we'll, uh, give, we'll give some away yes, uh, yes. here in, in a, a little bit. Um, how'd you get... Uh, familiar with John Pierce strings. I know they were recommended to me a long time ago, and I use them on some of the guitars. Um, I, I, Kathy, you know, Kathy and her husband John, who's a wonderful songwriter, John Besner, mm -hmm. uh, knew knew those people, and mm -hmm. I think that's how I made the connection. I know I've I've met them at Nam and yeah. and, and some Mar sweet, Mary, sweet yeah, people. Todd, yeah, they're wonderful family. Yes, yes family exactly, run business. exactly. Um, Keith is saying um, for thumb picks. Uh, do you have any preferences? What are those? Are those nationals? What are you? No, th this is a Golden Gate. Oh, I great, love. Great. I, I mean, I, I don't think I could custom order a, a thumb pick that, that fits my thumb any better than that. It's just absolutely like a glove. 
so uh, and uh, obviously uh, other people might uh, you know have different preferences. I also have some um, uh, Dunlops because I couldn't um, this I, I can't find these right now, so I've only got this one. So I had to have some spares. So the Dunlops are working, but Golden Gate is uh, is just my absolute favorite. I um, I have not seen their thumb picks. There's some gold. Well, I'll take it back. It's been a long time since I've seen a Golden Gate thumb pick. I use some of their. Uh, Larger picks. Um, I got one I've of seen those. Some mandolin picks that the Golden it. Gate uses that are fantastic. Yeah, that's a Golden Gate flat pick, which I I, yeah, I love. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've got a I've got a um, uh, a blue chip. Yep. And, and that's kind of the the gold standard. And I, I got this for a fraction of the price of a of a blue chip. I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of liking this a lot lately. Yeah. And that's full heavy. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, nothing. very heavy. Yeah, very yeah, yeah. Heavy. I uh, years ago a friend uh, gave me a tortoise shell pick. Mm -hmm. And I had never played one. I was just happy with my little celluloid pick, and mm -hmm. that changed my life. Oh my gosh, the tone and the feel of a tortoiseshell. Of course, you can't can't get them anymore. But luckily, there's some companies like Blue Chip and Red Bear Trading Company. Are you familiar with those? Uh, picks? I've heard the name, but yeah, I they're great picks too. Yeah. Um, and they they have the the feel and tone of a tortoiseshell. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether I'm okay to mention this or not. But because it is illegal to do tortoise shell picks. Yeah. Uh, but Greg Voros, gosh, this is years ago. It's probably eight, ten years ago. Um, Greg, the head guitar tech uh, here at Groons, a good friend of ours, has been done with us for many years. Um, he had come across at a garage sale um, coasters that were tortoise shell. Oh, no. He bought these coasters and made a bunch of picks out of them. And I have one of those picks, and it is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's nothing like the same. Yeah, it, yeah. It'll spoil you. Uh, Jim Warren is asking, are there any chord form references? Chord, chord form references for open C. C. I'm not quite sure what you're The tuning, the, the tuning. Oh, for open C tuning. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, well, I, I'm sure there are. I, I can't, uh, I can't uh, name any books off the top of my head. Um, are either of those tunes written out? No. Okay. Uh, the first, the slow one, I just wrote. I mean, it's not. I haven't recorded it. And it mm -hmm. doesn't even have a name yet. Okay. Uh, the second one, the, the funkier one, is called Butterfingers. It's on my second album, mm -hmm. and uh, and Kathy learned that tune. We we play it <laughs> in the show. She's she's a quite a guitar player in her own mm -hmm. right. So yeah, yeah. it's a lot of fun to play with her. Um, I I play in three open tunings. I kind of limited it. To, you know, once you get into open tunings, and it's wonderful, but you can kind of start twisting the tuners and get get into the land of, of yeah, uh, yeah. obscure uh, tuning. So I, I, I limited it to open C, open G, and open D. And there is some uh, uh, transference of the shapes because this one's got the, the, three, the third on top. Right. And the open G has the, the third of the scale on the second string. Mm -hmm. And open D has the third of the scale on the third, on string. The third string. And the rest of them are roots and fives. So this, you know, if you had like... That move mm -hmm. in open C is on those two strings in open G mm -hmm. and on those two strings in open D. Mm -hmm. So that helps too in, in, in me trying to make. I, I decided to just concentrate on a few open tunings and try to get good at them yeah. rather than, um, you know, kind of wade through the shallow end of, of two dozen different tunings. Yeah. It's a, it can get uh, thick pretty quick yeah. with yeah. all that. I remember talking with Phil Kagey, and uh, Phil would say, <laughs> he'd say, of course, he's brilliant and yeah. processes things very differently yeah um but i remember him saying yeah when i just get bored i just start twisting things down here and then i'll just come up with something and then i'll figure out what i did and what tuning i'm in and I, it, I i managed to sneak my way backstage at a leo kotke concert it, this was in the 70s mm -hmm. and um pestered him with questions you know the poor man's trying to relax after a show and he's got this guy <laughs> But he told me, he says, be careful. He, he, he's the one that warned me about uh, too many open tunings. Mm -hmm. As he put it, he says, you start learning this way and not this way. Right. Meaning you can learn a one, four, five and a dozen tunings, or you can get into more advanced harmony by just, you know, limiting right. the, the number of tunings. How true. Yeah. Very true. Um, Jerome uh, Hebert is saying, which guitarists... Um, are your favorites and have most influenced you? Oh my gosh! There's so many. Yeah, there's just there's just too many. All, all of them, uh, you know, uh, the Beatles were were a huge influence, of course, um, and also Buffalo Springfield. Stephen Stills uh, playing was mm -hmm. a, was a big influence. 
Um, and, you know, Leo Kotke yeah, back Kottke. in the day. Uh, electric guitar heroes, uh, Mike Bloomfield and, of course, Hendrix. The first concert I ever went to was Jimi Hendrix. Really? I was 13, 14, I guess. Wow. Yeah. So there's that. Um, and, um, uh, just, oh, gosh, just so many of them. I, yeah. I, I don't even know where to, to, to begin. Robin Ford, I love his playing. Yeah. Acoustic yeah. guitar, of course, Tommy Emmanuel. That's yeah. what, what, yeah. what are you going to Phil yeah. Kagey. Yeah, um, uh, it's just, the list goes on and on. Yeah, on. yeah. yeah. Um, as I was listening to some of your stuff, I was reminded of Russ Berenberg. Oh, and and Russ is playing. I uh, love, love him. Just such a... Uh, a beautiful tone that you're able to get out of the instrument. Yeah, um, warm and sweet, and Russ has that quality as well. And it's, uh, you know, there's there's times where I would give up any fast lick I've ever learned to be able to have a tone that when I just play a simple chord, it tugs at your tugs at your heart. Well, thank you. you. Thank you. I'll take that comparison with Russ any day. He's, 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 <laughs> he's, he's wonderful. Uh, he's been a good uh, good friend, Russ. We haven't had Russ on in a long time. We need to call, give old Russ a call. See if we can get him back. Uh, John uh, is asking, just wondering, if you play in open tunings, do you have to relearn chord forms and shapes? And the short answer to that is yes. Uh, yes. Every, every, everything every, has uh, that's, that's the blessing and, and the curse of open tunings is everything's new again. And, and you can, um, you, for a while, you can just follow your ear, and it's just great fun. Yeah. I, I, what attracted me to, to open tunings was the kind of piano-like voicings that you yeah. can get. You know, like, uh, you know, the very resonant, um, so I mean, just do those right. kinds of sounds. Uh, so, so yes, you, ha you they're all different. Uh, the shapes are all, all different. Uh, I mean, I've, like, I've been playing in that tuning since the seventies, yeah. you know, and, uh, it, so it, it's a long-term project, but it's very, very rewarding. Yeah. Because uh, I can, uh, uh, I know my way around them now. Yeah. And that's and that's the key. If you can get past that one, four, five, Leo right. Kotke uh, uh, um, insight there, yeah. that is, that is that is the trick. You can just find colors in alternate tunings that you would never stumble across. Um, in there. Uh, Pat is saying, can you both jam a little bit? We, we will do a song at the end uh, here in just a couple of minutes. Hey, Richard, Pat. Uh, Pat, thank you for connecting <laughs> us both. This, this night is happening because of you, Pat. Yeah, so thank you so much for connecting us both. Great. Uh, Richard Lang is asking, what's on your guitar bucket list? For an instrument, perhaps? I don't know. Um, you mean, uh, for an instrument? Well, I, I, you know, I didn't bring it tonight, but I, I have a wonderful guitar built by... Uh, Brian Gallup. I actually have a couple of his guitars. And he's a builder in um, Michigan. Mm -hmm. He's up in Big Rapids, Michigan. And uh, and he, his guitars are just incredible. So I, I kind of have my bucket list guitar. <laughs> I, I, did, I, I ended up not bringing it. Shame on me. But uh, mm -hmm. but he's a, he's a great builder. Um, if I may be so bold, how old are you? Uh, I'm 66. 66? 66. Yeah. Um, and still busy as ever. How many? You're still act very active with uh, Kathy Mateus. Yeah. How many dates does she do in a year? Oh, we probably do um, uh, fifty. You know, mm -hmm. fifty or sixty. And it's it's mainly weekends. We occasionally go out um, for for longer periods of time. But yeah, so so I, I'm able to. Like I said, it's mainly weekends, so I'm able to teach midweek. During the week, yeah. And yeah. Um, but uh, the last few years, uh, Kathy and I went out just the two of us on stage. You know, after years of playing with a band, we mm -hmm. st we stripped her material down to me and her, mm -hmm. and it was challenging and very rewarding. And she's got a new album coming out in about a week and a half, and um, of which I gave you an advanced copy. You lucky guy! Yay! <laughs> I'm you know, honored to have that. Uh, <laughs> um, but um, it, it, this album came out of that period of us going out on the road, and uh, you know, normally. Uh, she would find songs, go in and record them, and then tour yeah. the record. Yeah. We found the songs, worked them up in her living room, mm -hmm. and went out, called it the Acoustic Living Room Tour, mm -hmm. and road tested those tunes in front of audiences. And I think you can hear, hear the difference. It really, um, she's so comfortable and confident with the material. Yeah. And playing, playing tunes in front of people, I, I know you, you know this, 
changes the way you play them. Yeah. You know, you you refine them in certain ways. Yeah. You know, you feel what what's working with the audience. They give you they give you energy and information back. Yeah. And so, in in ways big and small, these got shaped by playing them in front of audiences before we went into the studio. Yeah. If you could give some um, what's some a word of word or two of just some advice to the average. Um, player who's looking to um, improve his skills and uh, um, kind of get make that jump from playing in your in your in your house on the couch um, to actually playing playing with people. Well, get out there and play with people. It's a big scary step. Yeah, but don't uh, don't wait until you think you're ready because you'll never think you'll never, you'll never, never think you're ready. ready. Um, you know the. Uh, uh, when when I was in, I, in high school, I was already a pretty good guitar player, mm -hmm. and I got invited. I got asked to be in a couple of bands, but I was so shy. I just no, I didn't. Never, I and after the summer after graduation, I answered an ad in the paper in the next town over. Mm -hmm. So I thought because maybe I can nobody will know me over <laughs> there, and so that's how shy I was. Mm -hmm. But I just I just joined a band, and it was a garage band. We rehearsed more than we played, but mm -hmm. we did play. And that first time on stage, it was just a church dance, you yeah. know, and, and nobody was really paying attention. I was, I was shaking. I, I was like, couldn't grab the guitar neck. I was so nervous. The next song was a little better. By the end of the night, I was like, when's our next gig? You know, you, right. you know, you just got to jump in, and um, and find some people to play with, and uh, get in a band, and go go find a place where you can kind of suck for a while, you know. Yeah. Some little clubs, some little dive. I played some bi plenty of biker bars back in the day. <laughs> it's just an important. I, I can't. Just an important thing that to make that step from learning playing in your room to going out. I know it's terrifying. Uh, it is. It's terrifying for everybody. But there's only so much that you can learn in your practice room, and there's you can only go so far. And there's some things that you will never learn outside of playing with others and uh, being on stage and screwing up and uh, you know our friend Paulette mm -hmm. um, is is been going to guitar camps and she's now starting to perform we performed together at the student showcase in Swannanoa and she just came back from a, a camp in California and mm -hmm. where she performed three or four times during the week mm -hmm. and th that was sh she wouldn't have even considered that a couple of years ago oh, yeah. yeah yeah and she's doing great yeah she's doing great one of our great friends we saw her just a couple of months ago at our big uh, yeah. at our big guitar conference. Yeah. Uh, one more question. Keith is asking, have you experimented much with Dad Gad? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dad Gad is, you just take, uh, in open D, you just take that F sharp on the third string and tune it up a half step to G. And yeah, I, I play in, in Dad Gad. Uh, do, do some songs uh, in Kathy's show. There, there's a, a tune on her new album that's a, an old uh, British Isles folk tune called He Moved Through the Fair. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's been covered by a lot of people, and we uh, came up with our own arrangement. And it's just, on the record, it's just me and Kathy. Uh, mm -hmm. th th there's a, a band on some tracks, but that cut is just me and Kathy, and I'm in Dad Gad. Wow. It's a it's a wonderful tuning. Beautiful tuning. How many with these alternate tunings and playing live? How many guitars do you usually? Or I've got it knocked down to three guitars right now. Some, yeah. Sometimes four, but but uh, yeah, basically a standard tuning. One in open D, which then I can just dad gads just mm -hmm. a one one note away, and then I've got an open C guitar. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, all right, well that's enough of that stuff. We need to we need to land this ship. Um, hey, if you haven't uh, already, please subscribe to our Guitar Gathering uh, YouTube page where you're watching us now. Uh, take a moment to subscribe. I think we're over twelve thousand subscribers now. And we're getting close to two million views, so I'm I'm really excited uh, to watch uh, over uh, watch that flip over here in the next week or so uh, to two million views. Um, not not too shabby for our little our little uh, party that we do here. Um, I think we will probably have a live lesson. No, we will not have a live lesson next week because I'm going to be in Spokane, Washington. If you are in the Spokane, Washington area and you'd like to grab a lesson. Uh, while I'm there, uh, I'm more than happy to do that. Just email me at service at mightyoakmusic.com. We need to give away a few more things while I'm thinking about that. Um, the winner of these John Pierce strings is Tom Moore. Thomas Moore, 
Um, you have just won these strings. You and Ron, I'm going to need two more names there, Stephen. Um, email me at service at mightyoakmusic.com. Send me your address, screen name, what you won. That's always helpful. Uh, and then I can get these off to you. We're going to give away one more uh, set of strings. The winner of this is Kaniki2U. Kaniki2U. Um, you have just won a set of strings. And, uh, and then Paulette Fisk has won a CD, but she probably already has this. Yeah, CD. I'll send it. Well, yeah, she, she does. <laughs> We can <laughs> maybe we'll we can send her some strings. We'll give her some strings. We'll there give you go. some strings, Paulette, um, and uh, we'll save the CD for another another broadcast. But uh, well, congratulations! So our winners tonight were Ron T, Thomas Moore, uh, P Fisk, and then Kaniki to you. I'm sorry, I know I'm botching that name. I apologize. Uh, send me all of your information at service at mightyoakmusic.com. Screen name, mailing address, uh, phone number if you want to. Uh, what you won, that's always helpful, so I don't have to try and run that down. Hey, if you're interested in uh, being a part of our summer guitar conference coming up, the dates for it are June 12th through June 15th next year, 2019. Um, and uh, here in Nashville, Tennessee, can't think of a better way to uh, uh, immerse you in guitar than coming here and learning for three or four days. There's something about... Um, getting away from your life and coming and just getting immersed in guitar uh, for a while. I know you teach at a lot of camps as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful camps, incredible camps. Uh, check it out at guitargathering2019.com. Hey, be looking for our um, fretboard workouts um, on the Money Corps coming this weekend. So I'm really excited about that. We've got a big Labor Day weekend uh, coming up. I want to thank our uh, producer David Winkert. Thanks, David, for doing all the camera moves and everything. We're training a new person on chat. Uh, thank you, Stephen Quinn. Y'all can give our crew a hand here. Um, thanks, Stephen, for running chat with us. And our wonderful moderators, uh, Doug and uh, Neil, uh, keep me honest and have been putting up links uh, all night long. If you're interested in uh, learning more about Bill, uh, check out BillCooleyMusic.com. Mm -hmm. You can get in contact with him, see all the amazing things he's doing. Uh, look him up on YouTube as well, just some great videos. And he has a lot of instruction stuff. I even brought some. Maybe we'll uh, try and put up a PDF or something uh, on some of the things that uh, Bill is uh, working out. So that's it. We're going to play a little tune. What's that? What, uh, tell us about this tune. Uh, uh, it's called Bear Claw Blues, and I, I wrote it. It's, it's really just an excuse to play the blues, you know. But the only <laughs> bit of composing I did was this. It's just a simple repeating riff that works. Show us that riff slowly. We'll see. We'll do one more time with Dave. We'll get a good shot of it. Maybe I'll try and write that out. That'll be fun. Very cool. And that's a little riff that this whole yeah. So it works over the progression. Uh, you know, there's a long uh, a tradition of musicians writing kind of a, 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 a head to a blues over mm -hmm. a blues progression, so they can you know mm -hmm. call it their own. And yeah. everybody from Thelonious Monk to Charlie Parker to Miles Davis to Wes Montgomery, yeah. you, know, you, you know about that. So yeah. that, that's what this is. It's just sort of an excuse. So you'll hear that riff, um, the head, you know, at the beginning, at the end of the song, and everything mm -hmm. in between is just us jamming on the blues. <laughs> All right. So I'll play it through it one time, then you're going to join yeah, me. And, and then, then I'll we'll try and keep up. OK, <laughs> All right. <laughs>
again Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Thanks Appreciate for being here with us. Hey, keep up the great work in your own learning, and we will see you guys next time.